TFNN. Live at TFNN, the P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Now, the author of The Path of Least Resistance and The Tech Insider, David White. Afternoon, traders. It's another beautiful Monday, February 27th, down here in Clearwater, Florida, the headquarters for technical trading and investing. It is Orthodox Green Day, the uh, first day of Lent for the uh, Greek Orthodox Church. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, uh, Greeks just uh, slightly north of us, if you've ever come down here. Uh, there's a, They go diving for sponges. Uh, most of them actually came over here I don't know, 100 years ago or something when uh, the sponges off the coast were the things to get before the days of uh, synthetic sponges. And they uh, continue to do that. They have a festival. I think it was about three, four weeks ago where they always have uh, someone dive off to find, uh, uh, it's like high school kids, uh, boys dive off boats and try to find a, a little cross out there that they toss in the in the water. But uh, a lot of Greeks still up in that area. Uh, from, uh, I guess, over 100 years of being up there. But uh, always neat to go up there if you ever do get a chance to come down here and visit vacation. Uh, going down to the uh, the fishing docks just slightly north of uh, Clearwater, always a good time, lots of nice restaurants. Ships coming, or boats, I wouldn't call them ships, boats coming in, in off the uh, uh, coast with uh, shrimp and tuna. Uh, always a great place to go up there and uh, lots of great Greek food. Uh, but it is their Orthodox Green Day, or the first day of Lent for the uh, Orthodox Church. On my radar today, uh, most of the earnings are over. There's a few. We'll uh, talk about them. But for the most part, 99% uh, of the S&P 500 uh, have uh, reported. Uh, secondarily, the debt ceiling fight looks like it'll be back on uh, before elections. Uh, probably going to bring that up uh, just for the fact that uh, how it affected the markets uh, last August uh, when it was all going on. But it uh, looks like it's going to come on uh, shortly before uh, the election this year. So that's going to be rather interesting for uh, uh, us out here. Let's see if I get one more thing here. Yeah, let's see. Oh, and other things. Uh, probably the, if I can't turn on the radio or uh, turn on a financial uh, cable channel without seeing gas price talk, um, I'm wondering actually how much it's going to affect the marketplace. Uh, so far, it seems like it hasn't uh, been able to at all. So uh, very interesting that uh, we see all these market pressures in the market uh, basically pretty much ignoring uh, all the uh, all the stuff that we've heard. Um, probably more uh, amazing is that we can have this market up uh, like we do on basically absolutely no volume today. Uh, I thought Friday was light. We've got uh, 2.6 billion shares on the consolidated tape. Uh, this is going to come in about 300 million light of even Friday's volume at least at the current rate. Uh, 1371 on the S&P, up uh, 5 points, uh, up uh, eh, 10 points on the NASDAQ and 35 on the Dow. Uh, certainly over 13,000, but uh, not a roaring endorsement so far. Uh, markets can creep up like this for a long time. Uh, it's just very interesting to see, um, you know, I would think that we'd want to be seeing something like uh, 13,000 on the Dow. Five, six billion shares, uh, 2.6 billion with the possibility of 3.2 by the end of the day. Uh, just very, very sad volume. Uh, just uh, wonder what's actually going on out here. It almost seems like uh, there's the magical uh, mystery hand out here moving the markets these days. Be very interesting to see how we do close today. After the earnings uh, tonight, we do have a a couple of smaller stocks. One is Zag, Z-A-G-G, -G, um, and it's uh, 
kind of a good proxy to see, and it comes out much after uh, Apple and Android and all the other phone earnings. So you get kind of an idea. Uh, Zag, of course, making a lot of those uh, add-ons like covers and uh, cases and uh, uh, earphones, just about anything you can put with a uh, tablet or a smartphone. Um, and uh, kind of getting squeezed out a little bit. Um, and actually, let's go to a chart real quick. Let's see, AGG. It's had kind of a nice bounce off the bottom. It went back and retested uh, a, a nice gap. Uh, got awful close. Uh, still, that gap is there. Didn't quite get into it, but uh, certainly the heavy volume still on this. Uh, down around that uh, $6.45, uh, was that six forty? Uh, low on December 29th with 2.4 million shares. Uh, still looks like it could come back and bounce around that $6 line. Uh, I'd really like to keep an eye on this thing. If it got back down to that 640, uh, 625 level uh, and uh, continue to have very light volume, this thing may get enough uh, uh, energy out of it to actually be a lo nice long-term trade. Uh, that may probably be back into late August uh, maybe September next year, where everybody gets to buy uh, or gets to buying all kinds. Uh, the other one I wanted to talk about was PIX. We talked a little bit about that. Uh, earnings are tonight. I didn't get to check, but let's see if I can't pop that up. Uh, uh, headlines. I'm pretty sure earnings are tonight. Uh, had a nice little bounce here. We talked about this last week as one of the best uh, stocks to probably buy in case of any war coming out in the Gulf. And I th thought that uh, probably some other people got into the same thing. Uh, maybe some long-term shorts finally decided it was time to get out because we had some amazing volume over the last two days on this. Uh, but the earnings are out after the bell. But uh, uh, that, I like that pattern. Uh, maybe I'll zoom in here a little bit so you can all see. Uh, but uh, these light consolidation patterns, uh, I love. Uh, this thing has been moving back and forth in a, uh, what, eh, 30 cent range, something like that, from uh, almost, uh, what, uh, is that uh, January, February? Uh, you've got probably 20, 25 trading days there that really set up a nice move. Uh, of course, you get that move off the bottom uh, right there. And uh, of course, that's the one everybody wants to get 40 cents to 100 buck uh, 85 uh, up at that high on November 16th. Uh, but you like these things to kind of come back down. Uh, probably the best chance you had was that 82 cents on December 22nd. But uh, always keep a close eye on this one. I wasn't quite expecting uh, so much out of this without even a f uh, shot being fired. But uh, looks like. Uh, a lot of people getting in and out of this uh, with high gas prices. Specific ethanol, uh, always one. We were kind of talking about several uh, on several shows when I sat in for Ken last week about stocks we'd want to buy in case of emergency uh, and possible big move. Uh, let's get back to our charts. So anyway, earnings after the bell on uh, uh, specific ethanol, uh, but keep an eye on it. Uh, Sprint and 10-foot poles. Uh, Sprint was over the weekend was reportedly just hours away from an eight billion dollar deal and acquisition of Metro PCS. I know we've got several people in the den are big Sprint fans, at least trading it. I don't know about the company. Uh, the company's board got involved uh, and basically blew the deal out of the water, saying there's no way we want to get involved right now. Uh, in uh, they didn't find out the exact reasons. My guess is that they didn't want to get involved. Uh, right after this AT&T deal uh, that went south with T-Mobile. Uh, but it looks like Dan Hess uh, is actually on the hot seat and may be, re uh, may be uh, uh, a new CEO for Sprint. Um, the board didn't quite like uh, going uh, as far as he did in uh, uh, basically talking about spending up to $8 billion uh, for Metro PCS. Uh, let's see if we have any responses here. Got, got just a little ha housekeeping to do here so I can actually move things around on my monitor, see what I'm looking at here. There we go. Eh, it's not in there today. Generally, there's a gentleman in the den that's almost always trading Sprint. 
or talking about Sprint or thinking about Sprint. But I don't see any post from him just uh, quickly. Uh, we talked a little bit about 3D printing last week. Um, one of the companies that I have in my uh, newsletter uh, came out with earnings that were fairly good. Uh, the Smithsonian is actually starting to lend a lot of pieces in their collection uh, to foreign museums. They have over 137 million pieces uh, or items in the collection at the Smithsonian, Smithsonian Institute. Uh, they only have enough room to display about 2% of them at any one time. Uh, what they are now doing, uh, because they're afraid of just the sheer mass of what they have, uh, the ability to actually uh, keep it all and what it would happen if it was destroyed, have set upon a project to scan uh, every one of the pieces that they have, every new piece that does come in, and make sure that they keep it. But what they are going to be doing is uh, lending some of the original statues of people like Jefferson uh, to foreign countries. Uh, to the Louvre, to uh, art, uh, some of the other stuff, and it half if, it, if it's an option or actual object, uh, they're going to be scanning these, making 3D models uh, to keep as reserves in their collection. Why they actually lend these things out? Uh, some of the new 3D printing technologies actually can do something five feet by seven feet by eight feet. So it's uh, very interesting to see this kind of technology actually coming up. I don't think that I would travel to go see a 3D printed uh, statue of Jefferson. I don't know if I'd go to see the original one, but I certainly wouldn't go to see the 3D printed one. But uh, Smithsonian's actually trying to do some work to get a lot of these things out of their closets and out in front of people in museums. Kind of interesting, but uh, certainly going to use a lot of... Uh, plastic and metal to uh, 3D print uh, six-foot statues. Uh, Android numbers are out. Uh, they came out this week with 450,000 apps in their app store, up from 150,000 a year ago. Uh, currently, uh, on a daily basis now, there are 800,000 Android devices activations uh, every day, and 300 million Android diverse, uh, devices worldwide already. Uh, when we start looking at the numbers, uh, maybe not on the apps, but on the actual devices, uh, looks to me like uh, Android continues to swamp uh, the iOS from, uh, from Apple. Uh, and uh, say what you will about not uh, being the best, uh, being the most open, especially in third world communities, is probably the biggest, um, biggest issue out here that you can find. Uh, one of the other cool things that I saw uh, is a brand new technology from Duracell. Uh, you've always had to plug your um, cell phone in to charge it overnight. Uh, they've got a new technology, something about as a little thinner actually than a credit card. Uh, I've got a nice picture of it here on Tiger TV if you're watching. Uh, but it's going to be allow you to inductively charge your cell phone. No more plugging it in. You put it close to the uh, charging station and that's it. Uh, brings up a lot of ideas and uh, maybe the possibility. Here's what people are saying about Tiger TV. Let's go to John in Tampa. Hey, John, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. You having a good day out there? A wonderful day. I love your Tiger TV. I watch it every day. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Oh, man, I appreciate you out there watching it. How long have you been watching the Tiger TV? I watch it almost a month now, and it's just it's wonderful. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's cool. You see the charts and everything. Thanks so much for the hard work. Tiger TV, a great news service from TFNN.com. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of investment newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume in the major stock indices tell him when to be at the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakout gains. Go to TFNN.com today, click Investment Newsletters, and get Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks.
take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective and maximize your returns. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor, Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN.com, author of Mastering Probabilities, a daily investment and trading newsletter, and teacher of the money game. Studies show that three out of five people are afraid for their life in trading these markets, and the number one reason given is fear of loss. Look. Fear stands for false evidence appearing real, and the money game proves it. Lesson number one, don't risk more than 1% of your trading capital on any trade. Why, you ask? Because 35 trades in a row where you risk 50 cents and make a dollar are all you need to double your trading capital versus the 230 losing trades in a row you would need to bring your balance to $100. Let me teach you more about the money game risk-free for 30 days. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, for your 30-day risk-free trial. You are born to be a money master, and I'll teach you how. Would you like to discover the next great tech stock? David White, TFNN's technology guru, has just launched his new newsletter, The Technology Insider. In his newsletter, David will be looking for those shining stars that may turn into the next Apple, Microsoft, or Cisco. David combines his technology background as a software programmer with his market skills as a successful professional trader to give you this unique newsletter. We're on the verge of the next great tech run. With the Technology Insider, you'll be in front of the run-up and not lagging behind. David is developing a long-term investment portfolio. Therefore, we're only offering the Technology Insider as an annual subscription with a remarkable price of only $395. That's right. For a little over $1 a day, you'll receive the fundamental technology wisdom and technical trading skills of the Technology Insider, David White. What are you waiting for? Go to the front of TFNN.com, click on the link on the front page, sign up for your two-week free trial, and become a Technology Insider today. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Anyway, we're uh, kind of wrap up the news here before the uh, break at the uh, bottom of the hour. Uh, anyway, uh, pretty interesting technology uh, at the Consumer Electronics Show. The number one thing that uh, they were looking at is uh, being able to come up with new keyboards and finding ways to waterproof and armor uh, portable technology. Um, being able to uh, charge without a, another hole in the, your device always makes it just a tad a bit easier to make something waterproof. Uh, but uh, it'll be awful convenient not to have to uh, actually um, plug everything in, but just kind of lay it close to where you want. Uh, this same technology is being patented for car charging, so you wouldn't have to plug in your car every night. You just drive over a mat and your electric car charges overnight. Uh, but anyway, Duracell looks like the first rat to the cheese in getting a technology that will actually fit inside a cell phone and an, even an existing cell phone so you don't have to uh, actually uh, uh, you know, plug something in. Kind of cool. Um, this is probably the most bizarre uh, chain of events that I've seen anyway. And I don't know if we can make a lot of money on it, but it, I find it incredibly interesting. Uh, Friday afternoon... Uh, about 20 miles from here at McDill Air Force Base, two uh, Spain's uh, C-130 transport planes flew in and flew out in a matter of uh, uh, minutes, uh, hauling off $500 million worth of gold and silver. Uh, in 2007, Odyssey Marine found 
a uh, sunken ship off uh, the coast of Peru. Uh, and that ship had about $500 million worth of gold and silver on it. Uh, they went ahead and went down, uh, collected all of the um, gold and silver, and brought it back here to Tampa, uh, on which uh, Spain actually filed a lawsuit saying that they owned it. Uh, according to uh, records, it looks like Spain uh, had a ship, went down, stole a huge amount of gold and silver, and on the way out, uh, the ship was sunk uh, by other warships from England. Uh, this goes back a couple hundred years. Um, so what's really uh, weird about this? Uh, after 2,500 years of uh, maritime law saying that salvagers uh, have the right to go back and get, uh, and mostly it's been about 80% of any wreck, uh, they couldn't even prove that this was actually Spain's ship. Well, uh, you know, the amount roughly uh, matched a record that Spain had, so they went ahead and filed suit. Uh, while the suit was going on, uh, WikiLeaks, if you remember that whole deal, came along. And we found out from WikiLeaks that Eric Holder and the Justice Department uh, was sending cables uh, to the uh, Spain mission, our diplomatic mission in Spain, to trade a painting from one of the uh, contributors uh, to the presidential campaign who coughed up a couple million dollars uh, to get back a World War II painting uh, that they had to sell. Uh, actually, this gentleman's uh, father had to sell to get out. Uh, I guess they were Jewish uh, Jewish descent. They made him pay, uh, take this painting that was worth, I don't know, probably $50,000 then. It's supposed to be worth about $5 million now uh, and sell it for $350. Well, uh, the family wanted this painting back and, you know, they gave uh, a politician, you know, a couple million dollars and what had happened? Well, suddenly you've got Eric Holder getting involved uh, on a personal basis and uh, putting uh, government, uh, for, uh, government attorneys to work to make sure that Spain got this money and it wasn't held by Odyssey Marine. Uh, and that uh, they were working out a deal, a side deal, uh, in 2010 uh, to actually trade all these $500 million that Odyssey Marine went and spent three million dollars getting up off the sea floor to trade for a painting of one of the contributors to a presidential campaign. Well, <clears throat> there had been ongoing lawsuits on this and the Peru people said, well, you, all that silver and gold was ours, uh, so they filed a lawsuit too. So what did the Justice Department do? They got in, uh, they got to a couple of the uh, judges and said it was a matter of uh, national security and that we needed to get this money back to Spain in a hurry. So while there are still ongoing lawsuits and appeals going on, uh, they got a judge to issue an order Friday and gave uh, no um, heads up to the Odyssey Marine people, just said, hey, deliver the, uh, you've got to deliver this uh, gold in the next couple hours over to the Air Force Base, and that's it. Well, uh, maybe clear this up at the end of it but I mean we've got just about everything that would make a holiday uh, uh, a uh, Hollywood movie in this thing from gold to corruption to everything else but uh, just an amazing story out there for Odyssey Marine anyway we'll be back in a minute In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND-dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter the gold report with over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week in addition to covering the xau hui gld and dollar the gold report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market for your 30-day free trial to tom o'brien's gold report log on to tfnn.com today don't miss out on this great offer act now 
folks, this is Tom O'Brien. If you want to get great trade setups in equity as well as the option market, come over to TFNN.com and test drive my daily newsletter, Market Insights, for two weeks absolutely free. Each trade setup comes with a profit projection as well as stock placement. Included in Market Insights is a Twitter alert service. This allows you to take advantage of intraday setups. Volatility is back in the markets. What does that mean to you? To me, it spells short-term opportunity each and every day. The days of trending up on light of volume are gone. We have come off the highs with volume across the globe. Don't get caught in a complacency trap. Many of the indices have given back two months of trading in one week. We have a trader's market. You can take advantage of this trader's market by test driving my daily newsletter, Market Insights, free for two weeks. Market Insights will give you the edge you're looking for in the markets. Go to TFNN.com under Newsletter. Hit the Market Insight tab for your two-week free test drive right here, right now. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation location and the Morgan Stanley Smith Barney financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and certified financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC, member SIPC. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by Direction Shares. To learn more about technical tools for the sophisticated active investor, hit the Direction Shares banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And uh, I had some comments uh, about how nutty this whole thing sounds, but... Uh, uh, it, uh, if you want the uh, links to the uh, newspaper articles, uh, these things go back like several years, and uh, uh, it's in the WikiLeaks documents. It's uh, beyond. It's beyond so strange that yeah, people will probably think it. Uh, you're some kind of nut when you actually bring this up. It is one of the most bizarre, twisted uh, kind of uh, issues that it is, but. Uh, uh, from the Guardian to U.S. newspapers, uh, uh, they've all uh, this, actually this this goes back two years from the original WikiLeaks uh, cables. So uh, because it got brought up in the court case uh, about uh, the U.S. government uh, trying to uh, pawn off this gold to get a painting back from World War II. So uh, kind of interesting. But if you just uh, Google WikiLeaks, uh, Odyssey, Marine and painting, you'll see all the articles pop up from about two years ago about uh, uh, the whole uh, art for uh, Spanish gold and the embassy offer. Uh, but uh, that's the problem with uh, emails. Uh, you put something in there, even if you think it's a cable, it'll never see the light of day because it's a military-grade encryption. Uh, <laughs> then some comes out and blabs about everything. So it wasn't just uh, CIA covert ops. It was... Uh, all kinds of weird stuff going on in the in the world. Anyway, uh, 
One of the other things, uh, we're going to finish up with news here and then get into uh, stocks, and that is Intel confirms that the Ivy Bridge uh, project is delayed. Um, Ivy Bridge is the code name for Intel's 22 na nanometer uh, die shrink of the Sandy Bridge microarchitecture uh, uh, micro that is actually out right now. Uh, it looks like it's going to be delayed from anywhere from a month to three months. Uh, the really strange thing is that it looks like, uh, you know, in this kind of market, it doesn't matter if you come out uh, uh, INTC with bad news. Uh, it just uh, is not going to be uh, talked about too much. Uh, still up 28 cents today, Intel. Uh, on the, on the, uh, and this is not just a rumor, it's been confirmed. Uh, that they, their new chipsets are going to be delayed. So I guess, it, I don't know what it is about this market, but uh, even bad news tends to look like good news in technology these days. Uh, lastly, uh, I guess before we go to break, and we'll come back, well, I've got the long segment these days. Uh, the FBI has turned off 3,000 uh, GPS tracking devices. We've been talking about this a little bit, uh, just as a matter of uh, privacy. Uh, that the uh, FBI had 3,000 tracking devices on cars without any warrants. Uh, of course, uh, well, about uh, three weeks ago, uh, the Supreme Court weighed in on this and uh, basically said that you've got to have a warrant to put something on somebody's car and track them if you're from the government. Um, they're now actually uh, asking uh, the court to let them turn them on for just a few minutes because so many of these things have gone missing. Uh, each one uh, apparently is one of these highly over-engineered -engin devices that cost about $4,500. So uh, the government, the FBI, is uh, more than willing to uh, get a hold of these uh, again, and I guess uh, maybe ask for warrants next time. But anything that they learned uh, from those uh, uh, GPS devices uh, is from the, uh, as they say, fruit of the poisonous tree and cannot be used. But to uh, give you a little idea about how big Big Brother is out there. Uh, 3,000 of us is, were being tracked without a warrant, uh, which I thought was fairly interesting. Uh, we're going to get to some stocks here fairly quickly. Um, Borg Warner was one of the ones that I thought that was most interesting. Uh, looks like it's trying to continue to hang up at these highs. Borg Warner's symbol is BWA. Uh, BWA and at what we're looking at is the April 4th high. Uh, it came in with uh, 2 million shares at uh, $82.28. Uh, we've gone over that to uh, $83.45 with 1.4 million shares. Uh, done a little bit of reversal here today, uh, but uh, still looks like maybe one more attempt at that top uh, for some stocks out here. Uh, but it's very tough to see how this is going to play out. Uh, but uh, one that we want to be watching. Uh, probably the most interesting of all that I've found in my scans uh, was Caterpillar. Uh, Caterpillar, one of the strongest stocks in the Dow, has uh, given a, a fairly decent uh, sell signal. Uh, what we look at that is the May 2nd high, uh, 100 and, uh, what is that, $136.55, uh, uh, 11 million shares. Uh, we got it, whoop, I'm reading it wrong here. I need glasses, $116.55 on May 2nd, 11 million shares. Uh, got to uh, $116.95 on just 7.5 million shares on uh, Friday. Uh, today, pulled back a little bit, uh, about 4 million shares, but uh, certainly uh, uh, energy's off about 15% up to the test of this last high, and we're continuing to see... Uh, a lot of tops like this on just uh, not horrifically lower volume, but certainly significantly lighter volume in this market. And let's see if we got uh, okay. Yeah, da 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 da. da. Oh, what else we got? Okay, and uh, next one I wanted to get to was Cardtronics, another one that's banging out highs. Uh, this one looks like it has finally started to uh, pull back uh, on this uh, uh, little bit of a bullish day. Cartronic CATM is the symbol. Uh, we've seen three uh, highs with three uh, 
uh, with the last two volumes shrinking, um, Cartronic CATM uh, with a original high at twenty-eight dollars forty-six cents, one point two million shares. We get into that with uh, half the volume on December twenty-seventh. Probably not too unsurprising uh, that uh, you're going to have light volume at the end of the year. Uh, but uh, not uh, surprising now that we're getting back into those highs on February 24th with 340,000 shares, and we finally get a reversal. So not, not uh, you know, just this extremely light volume, seeing a lot of these stocks already bouncing across and uh, uh, top those highs. Uh, if you want to give me a call, you can. Give me a ring at 877-927-6648. And we'll be uh, glad to discuss your particular stock. Uh, but uh, seeing a lot of high volume highs uh, being challenged by the lighter volume. Uh, the next one is Edison International. And that uh, symbol is EIX. Uh, seeing a, a high on October 27th, $41.57. Uh, 4.1 million shares, October 27th, that is. Uh, come back in it. Try to get uh, close to it. Uh, on the uh, 3rd of January, uh, does a little pullback, a little consolidation, uh, running back and last two days uh, up on uh, about uh, 1 million shares each day. Probably going to come in with that uh, pretty much the same thing today on that. Uh, but uh, you really want to be looking for a close back below $41.57. Uh, energy on this uh, uh, fairly weak uh, compared to this move up. Uh, but uh, about a dollar over those highs uh, being tested yet again today uh, on 1.6. What do we have here today? Uh, is that 1.6 yesterday? 1.6 million. Oh, okay. Um, so anyway, last two days, just to look at those volume bars down there, uh, fairly uh, innocuous uh, when we actually look at them blown up. But uh, just very light volume. Uh, we've got some ETFs also giving some very interesting signals today. Uh, one of those is the iShares uh, index uh, for Germany. Uh, we've seen a nice little high on October 27th, uh, $23.03, uh, 26 million shares. Um, got a little bit above it on Friday uh, on 5 million shares. So we're converting uh, 26 million shares to 5 million shares. Uh, anybody knows that just doesn't last too long. And in fact, it didn't last a day. Uh, we did kind of pull back, making a, eh, you could almost call it a kind of a little shooting star out here. Uh, not huge, but uh, light. Uh, but uh, no volume in the last uh, previous two days. A little bit more volume today on the pullback. Uh, but I'm wondering if that doesn't give us some kind of clue as to Germany actually coming out on this. Flextronic International, F-L-E-X. Uh, we talked a little bit about this one on Friday. Uh, it uh, was making a nice little high against a long-standing gap. Uh, we came into that gap uh, that uh, has had as high as uh, uh, the May 31st high into that gap uh, with 7.4 million shares. Uh, came into that on Friday with 5.8 million shares and getting our nice little pullback in this today. Another one that I thought was very interesting was Hogg. That's Harley-Davidson. Uh, that uh, stock has been up here uh, and testing its high. It's also kind of tucking back down just a little bit. Uh, that uh, is July 19th, uh, $46.88, uh, 10 million shares on July 19th. Uh, we've gotten just above that on a little spike on Friday. Uh, that came in with 1.4 million shares against that 10 million share high in Harley-Davidson. Um, not an instant blow-off sell-off. Uh, but certainly uh, testing these highs and then certainly pulling right back into them. Uh, energy on this one actually is one of the few that really uh, was significantly different than the downside energy. Uh, off about 25% uh, on the way back up compared to that huge move down starting on July 19th and uh, hitting a low on the August uh, 22nd uh, at $31.50. So uh, keeping an eye on that one. Uh, we've got, uh, let's see, Kinder Morgan, which is a KMP. Uh, this one's doing uh, one that may be good for uh, shorter-term traders as it's made kind of a, uh, a very uh, short-term top on lighter volume. Uh, not as uh, light as uh, 
Harley, but uh, certainly fairly light. Kinder Morgan is KMP, and we've seen kind of a nice little double top up here on January 26th. Uh, that had 1.3 million shares right at $90 even. Uh, we've gone up and touched uh, $90.60 on Friday out here and kind of pulling back, making a little hammer out here today. Uh, but certainly 30% 30, uh, 30 off the previous high on volume and a nice little double top in this market. Uh, what else are we watching? Maxim Integrated Products, uh, another one of the uh, eh, kind of favorite of the semiconductor crowd, uh, also making uh, some rather um, uh, hard to read highs, uh, not 50%, but certainly lighter volume. Uh, I'm looking at the high in Maxim on May 10th, and that was uh, $28.40, 4.4 million shares. Uh, we got into that with a uh, a little lighter volume, basically 3.8 million shares, uh, and have done a little bit of pullback here. Probably going to go back and test it one more time, but uh, what we are seeing in volume today, uh, which is 1.6 million shares, we looked for 1.9 million shares the day before that, 2 million shares, and 3 million shares the day. So uh, going kind of sideways here over the last few days, very light volume um, came in, you know, just a lot lighter than that uh, previous high out here. Uh, OIS, which is Oil States International Index, another one that's making a, a nice little sign out here that uh, maybe it's hit its high. And uh, we're looking at the last major high, and that was August 2nd, uh, $87 even, 2.3 million shares. Uh, and we got into that on Friday with 980,000 shares. Uh, so looking at a little less than 50 percent uh, volume on Oil States International, um, and uh, when we look at it, uh, you know, just a huge energy down. Let me get a few of these. Uh, yeah, probably the best way to look at it there. Huge energy down off that uh, August second high. Uh, went all the way back down to forty four dollars and seventy seven cents. Uh, that uh, low really hasn't been tested, so it is a high volume low. Uh, we've come off that with uh, uh, certainly nowhere close to the energy that we had on that way down. Uh, we've had a nice uh, slow and even punch to the top up here to test that high one more time. Actually went 65 cents above it, uh, but uh, looking like we're going to get a decent close uh, well below that uh, Friday spike high in the marketplace. Uh, so another one to keep an eye on. Let's uh, see how much time we have left here in the shoe. Uh, we've got a couple minutes before the break and then another segment. Uh, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, we'll be glad to take your call. Uh, right X S&P equal weight uh, uh, is still looking like it wants to maybe uh, come back and just snake just a little higher. Uh, we have In the equal weight, we have a high... Uh, of uh, July 7th, uh, $52.04, that had 1.7 million shares. Um, I've been debating whether this thing can get up here because of the incredibly light volume uh, that we're seeing at these highs. Uh, today, maybe you're going to do a little less than 400,000 shares. Uh, so in an ETF uh, where you actually see something in the neighborhood of 25 Thirty percent of the volume of uh, previous highs just can't make you think that uh, this uh, rally has a long way to go. Anyway, we'll be back in just a minute. Uh, we'll be talking about the uh, Go Long America Tour. Uh, two more dates coming up here uh, rather briskly. Uh, Tampa, a new date for that. And uh, Boston coming up here, I think, on the 6th. 